Thank you, Jim. It was a generous introduction. Uh, I've seen you give other introductions, and that's one of the better ones I've seen you give, so thank you. <laughs> I appreciate Jim Kroll for his service to the United States of America, both in the military and as a prosecutor, as uh, many roles in the office of Deputy Attorney General, and now as our fearless leader at EOUSA. He has brought a service culture to EOUSA to support our U.S. Attorney community and our AUSAs and our support staff uh, that are out in the world doing the real work that's done in U.S. Attorney's offices. So I appreciate you, Jim, and so th I'm so thankful you're part of our team. Thank you also to Tim Garrison and Stephen McAllister, our Kansas City area U.S. Attorneys, Kansas City Police Chief Rick Smith. I always love coming to Kansas City. I was the uh, vice chair and chair of the Midwest Haida and came down here on a regular occasion and both uh, enjoyed the meetings, but especially enjoyed the barbecue, uh, like we did last night as well. Uh, I, Jesse Panuccio, our, our associate attorney general, is here. I'm glad you're here, Jesse. Uh, we negotiated a deal to move around a few of the portraits in Maine Justice uh, last night while we were at the World War I Museum, and I've uh, appreciated working with Jesse ever since I got here um, in the various roles we've both had. Um, Deputy Director Tom Brannon from ATF. Tom, I'm glad you're here. Uh, Utam Dillon, my good friend, DEA Acting Administrator, is here today. Um, Assistant Attorney General Stephen Boyd is here. He runs our, our uh, legislative affairs shop and has been a, a, a good partner in many of those issues and has really been on the front lines of fighting um, uh, some of the battles that we've had to, we've had to have at the uh, Department of Justice, but he's doing a great job. Um, my good friend Matt Dummermuth from the Northern District of Iowa previously. I, Called him up uh, once I became chief of staff and asked him to come help and uh, run our Office of Justice programs. And he volunteered, and I'm so proud of for our friendship. And you are a good and honorable man. I'm glad you're here today, Matt. Acting Director Katie Sullivan for our Office on Violence Against Women is here. I saw her last night at the uh, museum. Uh, Phil Keith, the head of our COPS office, is here. Phil, it is always good to see you. Um, and Associate Deputy Attorney General Robin Thieman, who without her None of this would be possible, uh, both the conference and the entire PSN project. I was able to give her kudos last night, but she wasn't in the room, and so I hope she's in the room today because I really appreciate Robin's hard work, and it's someone that uh, when I showed up in October of 2017 and I was in a meeting on PSN and I saw Robin, we both pointed at each other and said, I know you. So it's good to see a familiar face when I came back on uh, to help General Sessions as his chief. And I'd like to thank each of you in this room who have made the commitment to be here at this conference this week and who have partnered with the Department of Justice to make the PSN program work in your neighborhoods and in your cities. I also want to thank President Donald Trump for joining us tomorrow. I think his attendance at this conference says a lot about his commitment to supporting law enforcement and keeping people in this country safe. Um, you know, I, last night I had dinner with the U.S. attorneys uh, that are in town for this conference, and they asked me, how did you get the president to show up at the PSN conference? And the simple answer is, I asked him. <laughs> thought that's what you do, right? I mean, you're... Uh, I want to thank him also, President Trump, for yesterday honoring President George Herbert Walker Bush by declaring yesterday as a national day of mourning. I know the law enforcement community is especially mourning the loss of President Bush. He was a strong supporter of law enforcement and he helped lay the foundation for 22 years of declining crime in America. In fact, I've heard the story several times from General Sessions who would say how he remembers President Bush being sent by, then Vice President Bush being sent by President Reagan to Miami to combat the cocaine cowboys that, was, that were tearing apart the city of Miami and South Florida. And he helped establish a task force that is a model for law enforcement cooperation uh, that we still use to this day. So I, I think all of us in law enforcement owe a debt of gratitude to President Bush and then Vi Vice President Bush uh, for his leadership in law enforcement areas that, are, that show collaboration between federal, state, and local law enforcement partners. So thank you to President Trump for honoring President Bush and for honoring us tomorrow with his presence. Above all, I want to thank all of our 16 award recipients that we're going to have a chance to honor today. We received dozens of worthy nominations this year, but even with, through this tough competition, each one of you stood out for your recognition. Each one of you has helped this department reach new levels of effectiveness and productivity by implementing and supporting the Project Safe Neighborhoods pro plan 
which is our flagship violent crime reduction plan. After all, PSN is about empowering our people out in the field, or as I like to say, the place where the real work gets done. Rather than having Washington, D.C. dictate a top-down, uniform approach, PSN directs our U.S. attorneys to work with their communities to develop a specialized, customized crime reduction plan to target the most violent criminals in the most violent areas and to prevent and deter violent crimes before they happen. I ran this program for five and a half years as the United States Attorney for the Southern District of Iowa, and I know it works. I've seen it firsthand. I've personally prosecuted PSN cases. So have AUSAs in my office and, and friends that are here today, Melissa Zeringer and Kevin Vanderskell, who I see right here in front. Kevin, it's good to see you. You were my first assistant, and uh, we did some great things together. I'm, I'm so proud of you. You were the acting U.S. attorney, and you did more than just act. You did the job that you were asked to do, and so I'm proud of your friendship, and I'm proud of your service to the United States of America. Um, and I appreciate both you and Melissa being here today. When I was U.S. attorney, PSN helped put away two gunmen who had held a 76-year-old woman at gunpoint for an hour while they ransacked her farmhouse. The two men cut her phone line, destroyed her cell phone, and stole her car. A few weeks later, one of the defendants, who was a felon, brought, bought two guns from an undercover ATF agent. He was arrested, and the ATF agent found some of the stolen valuables in, in his car. He called the police in Iowa and asked if there had been any robberies in the area recently. That led them to an investigation that put the robbers behind bars and achieved justice for that 76-year-old woman. Another example is in Davenport in eastern Iowa, where the police responded to a call after a man allegedly threatened a woman, shot a gun into the air, and then stole a car and drove away. A week later, police across the river in East Moline responded to another call of a man making threats with a gun and then speeding off. The man was then pulled over for speeding in Davenport, and the officer recognized the vehicle, searched it, and found a gun. That was enough to put him behind bars so he couldn't threaten anybody else with that gun. And in Clinton, Iowa, along the river north of Davenport, a convicted felon beat up another man behind a convenience store with a shotgun. He was caught with the shotgun, and we put him behind bars for nearly five years as being a felon in possession. I could go on and on about all the cases we did together, Kevin. I know you know it well. But what I do know is that PSN works. It gets the worst of the worst off the streets and reduces violent crime in America. Those successes continue today through the reinvigorated Project Safe, Safe Neighborhoods, um, both in Iowa and across the country. In the Southern District of Mississippi, Project Eject, which brings together federal and local officers and prosecutors, the Mississippi State Crime Lab, nonprofit organizations, faith leaders, and community leaders, some of them in the room today. This team, Project Eject, works together to prosecute crime, deter crime, and help former prisoners make the transition back into society. They hold town meetings and speak at local schools to keep kids away from criminal activities. In other words, they're hitting violent crime at every angle, and it shows. As of October, violent crime is down 16% in Jackson. Our PSN task force in Dallas, Erin, is, is Texas-sized as she likes to remind me. It brings together 60 people, including law enforcement officers, local government officials, and local school personnel, and 15 community organizations. Collaboration between officers at the federal, state, and local levels in Dallas has already led to more than 100 arrests of violent criminals in just the past eight months alone. And task force members have already strengthened bonds between the community and our police officers through more than 40 community meetings and events. Once a month, they meet with former prisoners who are returning home. They have already met with 300 former offenders and worked to help them get their lives back and remind them that a gun in their possession is a bad idea. In Tampa, Maria, Captain, Captain Paul Luzinski came up with a Violent Impact Player Program, or VIP, which doesn't get him in any exclusive clubs. Using criminal records and gang membership, Captain Luzinski determined who the most violent criminals in Tampa are, which is exactly the first step in our PSN program. And now he's helping put all of them behind bars. One study credits the VIP program with a 7.9% drop in violent crime in Tampa. 
Of course, there are 91 other districts, and some of the U.S. attorneys here on the stage and many of you joining us here today, that have achieved great success through the PSN project, including right here in Kansas City. Tim and his team recently conducted a PSN operation called Operation Washout, which led to the arrest of 56 known gang members or repeat violent offenders. Officers also seized methamphetamine, ecstasy, cocaine, and 13 guns as part of this operation. We are building on that success here in Kansas City with a brand new Midwest Gun Intelligence, Midwest Crime Gun Intelligence Center, which has become fully operational as of September. Here and across America, in Kansas City and in Des Moines, Miami, Tampa, Dallas, Los Angeles, PSN is making us a better investigative organization. We're better at investigating crime, targeting prosecutions against the worst of the worst, and preventing and deterring crime. It's making our lawyers and our officers more effective. And I have some good news uh, for our U.S. Attorney community. As of yesterday, we have 6,013 federal prosecutors on the payroll. It is the highest number ever in the history of the Department of Justice. And our, com our commitment to combating violent crime in our neighborhoods is never going to waver. And the numbers demonstrate the success we've had and the success we're going to have. And so much of this success was started in February 2017 when Jeff Sessions took the office as Attorney General and then set out to reduce crime in America. And we owe him a debt of gratitude. In fiscal year 2017, the Department of Justice, Justice prosecuted more violent criminals than in any year on record to that point. And because records are made to be broken, in fiscal year 2018, after General Sessions implemented the PSN program, we broke that record again by 15%. In that fiscal year, we also charged the highest number of federal firearm defendants in department history we broke that record by a margin of 17%. Tom, your folks have been pretty busy. We charged nearly 20% more firearm defendants than we did in 2017 and 30% more than in 2016. Meanwhile, we also bro broke records in prosecuting illegal entry by illegal aliens, increased the number of white collar defendants, the number of drug defendants, UTAM, at the DEA. I appreciate all of your hard work and your, your folks are doing a fantastic job in this environment. I appreciate that. And we also increased felony reentry by 38%. The numbers speak for themselves. This is outstanding, and it should continue. We cannot lose the momentum that we have established, and I won't allow it while I am the acting attorney general, and whoever may follow me as the next attorney general will not allow it either. But our goal at the department is not to just fill up our courts or our jails with defendants. Our goal is to reduce crime in America. In February of 2017, when General Sessions came on board, he received three executive orders. One of those executive orders was to reduce crime in America. The President has ordered the Department of Justice through the Attorney General to reduce crime in America, not preside over an ever-increasing crime rate. And PSN is helping to do that by ensuring that we are prosecuting the right people for the maximum impact. Violent crime and homicide were up in 2015 and 2016, but they are down in 2017, and in 2018, it will be down again. Our one estimate projects that the murder rate in our 29 biggest cities will decline 7.6% this year. That means fewer victims, fewer grieving families, and more peace of mind for the per people we serve. It also means children playing in front yards and people walking in the parks and going out on their streets and being safe in their neighborhoods. Everyone is entitled to be in their front yard and to play with their kids. That is what we fight every day through Project Safe Neighborhoods to enable. Drug overdose deaths in 2015 and 2016 were down, were up in 2015 and 2016, but they're down in the last six months that we have data. And opioid prescriptions are down nearly 20% 
since 2016. There are, these are incredible achievements. And I, 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 would, I would ask you to go, we're gonna post these remarks, and all of you in this room that have had something to do with these incredible results over the last two years, I would ask that you read these again, and you look at the incredible work that Project Safe Neighborhoods and our efforts by people like Adam Braverman in Southern California and John Bash and all the U.S. attorneys that, are, that have something to do with immigration and drug trafficking and gun crimes. Everybody in this room should celebrate this. We, these are incredible achievements, and they're your achievements. Each one of you in this room has played a key role in reducing crime in America. And we should celebrate it this week. But our work is never finished. We are going to continue to support our state and local partners, and I am confident that through those partnerships, we're going to continue to deliver results. And so, to all of our award winners here today, thank you for your outstanding service and your incredible work. And to all of you who are working side by side with us to improve safety and to reduce crime and to make sure that kids can play in their front yards, whether you're an officer, a prosecutor, a researcher, a faith leader, or a community partner. On behalf of the entire Department of Justice, thank you. And I will conclude this remark like a mentor of mine often concluded these remarks, just to tell everyone that works side by side with us to reduce crime. We have your back, you have our thanks. God bless the United States of America. Thank you. General, thank you for those inspiring words and your commitment to Project Safe Neighborhoods. So now we turn our attention to the PSN Achievement Awards. And as we announce the names of this year's recipients, I encourage you to read along in your program and note the incredible achievements being recognized. And I also ask that our United States Attorneys join the Acting Attorney General and your recipient for the photo as the award is presented. General. We will now begin the presentations of the 2018 PSN Achievement Awards. The first awards are given for outstanding individual contribution to the PSN program. This award recognizes individuals nationwide who have demonstrated a high level of commitment to the PSN initiative during the past year. This year, there are six recipients that met this high standard. They are, from the United States Attorney's Office for the District of Colorado, Bob Troyer, former United States Attorney. Welcome back, Bob. From the from the Tampa Police Department, from the Tampa Police Department Violent Crime Bureau, Captain Paul Lazinski. Congratulations, Captain. From the United States Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Georgia, Dee Dee Nelson, Law Enforcement Coordination Manager. Congratulations, Dee Dee. From the City of Detroit Police Department, Tricia Stein, Director of Administrative Operations. Congratulations, Tricia. And lastly, in this category, from the United States Attorney's Office for the Western District of Texas, Sarah Anarka, Chief of Major Crimes in the San Antonio Division. Congratulations, Sarah. Congratulations. One recipient from this category could not be here today. That's Gary Mervis. He's the founder of Partners Against Violence Everywhere. Congratulations to Gary. Our next award is being given for Outstanding Overall Partnership or Task Force. And this award recognizes an entire district in which close partnerships have been fostered with other local, state, tribal, or federal components and or community stakeholders, resulting in significant advancement of PSN's objectives. This year, there are two recipients. The first recipient, as the general mentioned, is Project EJECT Task Force from the Southern District of Mississippi. 
There are four members of this task force here today to accept this award. Pat McNamara, Assistant District Attorney from Hines County, Mississippi. Ricky Robinson, Assistant Chief from the Jackson Police Department. Darren Lamarca, First Assistant United States Attorney. And Courtney Coker, Criminal Chief. Congratulations, team. Our second task force being honored today is the Dallas PSN Task Force in the Northern District of Texas. Accepting the award for the task force are the following members. From the Dallas Police Department, Deputy Chief Avery Moore, Sergeant Leroy Quigg, Detective Mark McCulloch, Detective Mike Ruler, Michael Ruler, and from the United States Attorney's Office, Abe McLothlin, Assistant United States Attorney, Dal Croyall from the Law Enforcement Coordinator, and Philip Mital, PSN Coordinator. Congratulations, team from Dallas. It, yes, sir. Congratulations, Dallas. The next award is for Outstanding Local Prosecutor's Office or an Outstanding Local Prosecutor, which recognizes extraordinary work in a state or local prosecutor's office that makes important contributions to the PSN efforts. This year, we are recognizing local prosecutors from the District of Utah. The first recipient is the West Valley City Prosecutor's Office. Accepting the award is Ryan D. Robinson, Chief Prosecuting Attorney. Congratulations. Our, our second recipient is Brandon Miles, Chief Criminal Deputy Prosecutor from the Weber County Attorney's Office. Congratulations. Our next award is given for outstanding local police or sheriff department involvement. This award recognizes a police department that has shown superior commitment to targeting and preventing violent crime at the local level. There are two recipients this year. The first is the Wilmington Police Department and the District of Delaware. Accepting the award is Chief Robert Tracy. Congratulations, Chief. Our second recipient is the West Palm Beach Police Department in the Southern District of Florida. Accepting the award is Chief Sarah Mooney. Congratulations, Chief. Good stuff. The next award is for outstanding community involvement. This award recognizes a local citizen or group who has contributed significantly to a district's PSN program. This year we are recognizing two recipients. The first recipient is James Clark. James is the Vice President of Community Outreach for the Better Family Life Initiative in the Eastern District of Missouri. Congratulations, James. And our second recipient is Willie Barney. Mr. Barney is founder of the Omaha 360 Degree Violence Prevention Collaborative in the District of Nebraska. Congratulations, Willie. Our final category is the Innovative Prevention or Reentry Strategy. This award recognizes an individual or task force that has created a locally relevant prevention or reentry re strategy or program. Today, we honor two programs. The first is the Offender Alumni Association in the Northern District of, of Georgia. Accepting the award is Deborah Daniels, co-founder of the program. Congratulations, Deborah. Our second recipient in this category is the Justice Education Center. It's in the District of Connecticut, and accepting the award is Sherry Holler, Executive Director. Congratulations, Sherry. Great. 
So this concludes the presentation of the awards for the 2018 PSN Achievement Awards. Please join me in a round of applause for all of today's recipients. Congratulations. And thank you, General, for thank joining you. us today, sir. Uh, let's give a round of applause for our Attorney General. Uh, thank you. I'd like to ask uh, Tim Garrison back to come up for a couple of announcements. Thank you. Tim. Thank you, Jim. And uh, thanks also to Acting Attorney General Matt Whitaker and my U.S. Attorney colleagues uh, for being with us this morning. Uh, Jim's right, I do have a, a couple of announcements, and by a couple, I mean three pages. Um, and, uh, but we'll get through them quickly. Uh, the next set of breakout sessions begins at 10.30 a.m. And these are in the, the rooms throughout this level and the lobby level. Uh, today, lunch is on your own. The conference app that uh, I hope you've all downloaded to your, your phones uh, lists a number of places that you can go that, which are nearby. Uh, after lunch, there will be two more sets of breakout sessions. But then tonight, I, I definitely want to uh, encourage you to come back with us uh, to be here at, at 5 p.m. Uh, to hear from Chief Scott Thompson of the Camden County, New Jersey Police Department. Uh, Chief Thompson is a, a very accomplished and innovative leader, and he has an inspiring and an informational message that I, I know you will want to be here for. So please come back at 5 p.m. this evening. Now, let me give you some important security information for tomorrow morning. You may have heard we have a special guest coming. We, we are we're very excited for the, the president's visit tomorrow, but as a result of the increased security, things will be a, a quite a bit different in the morning. So please listen closely. Everyone will need to go through security screening tomorrow morning, which will be set up on the mezzanine or terrace level by the big Christmas tree. Screening will begin at 8 a.m. To access the conference site tomorrow, please go all the way to the lobby level and use the escalators to come back up to the mezzanine terrace level. You will not be able to exit any elevator on the ballroom or mezzanine level. Again, tomorrow morning, please go all the way to the lobby level and use the escalators to access the mezzanine terrace level. You'll need to check in and show a government-issued ID, like a driver's license or a passport. Only pre-registered conference participants will be allowed access. There will be magnetometers. You must pass through these to access the ballroom level and in, in all of the breakout and plenary sessions on that level tomorrow morning. Once you are cleared through security and can access the ballroom level, we strongly encourage you to plan to stay on this level. No weapons will be allowed, and this includes service weapons. This includes firearms, knives, batons, tasers, handcuffs, ammunition, even glass bottles, nunchucks, swords, clubs, <laughs> bows and arrows, battle axes, fingernail clippers, peanut-based snacks, <laughs> strong-smelling cologne, please secure these items according to your safety protocols. Note that the hotel has arranged for late checkouts for conference participants, so we will have until 1 p.m. tomorrow to vacate our rooms. Tomorrow's breakout sessions will begin at 9 a.m. as scheduled. Some breakouts are on the lobby level. Most are here on the ballroom level. If you are attending a breakout on the ballroom level, please plan extra time to get through security before the breakout session begins. If you're attending a breakout session on the lobby level, please can't plan to come through security when your breakout session concludes. Everyone needs to be seated in the ballroom no later than 10.45 a.m. Everyone needs to be seated in the ballroom no later than 10.45 a.m. We thank you for your, your patience as we conform to all the necessary safety and security pro protocols. 
again, I really do want to encourage you to come here, uh, Chief Thompson, uh, tonight. I think you will be, be glad that you did. Uh, until then, we'll see you at 5 o'clock. <laughs>